Okay, class, today we're going to talk about atmospheric perspective. These examples are by illustrator Mark Schultz. Look at the giant ants and how from the foreground to the middle ground to the background, they not only get smaller, but they also get lighter in value, a little hazy. And with the next example, again, notice the darkness in the foreground, the middle ground being a middle value, and then the trees in the background getting really light. Here, same thing. Large dark element in the foreground, the cliffs, and the dinosaur as we get further away it gets a little bit lighter, a little bit lighter and hazier, and then lightest of all in the far background. Same rule applies to like, oh, giant killer bumblebees. They'd be uh, dark in the foreground, and then in the middle ground, lighter, and then lightest of all in the background. Goes for everything. So look at your worksheet now. Okay, so continuing on our worksheet on atmospheric perspective, and you guys have this, these three drawings to complete on your own. And for this, I would recommend that you use three pencils, uh, and those would be a 6B for your real darks, and that's going to be your, your darkest, the 6B. If you have to pick just one, probably the 4B would be recommended. And if you don't have anything else, then use a 2B. That's going to be your hardest graphite and get your lightest effect. And so I'm just going to start with this one. And just going to start at the back. And remember, with foreground, middle ground, and background, your foreground is going to be darkest. Your middle ground is going to be kind of in the middle and then that your background is going to be your lighter lighter or lightest colors and so this is just a quick quick shade and I can just color right through that tree because I know I'm going to do it darker later So that's no problem. So now I pick up my 4B and I start working in the middle. Again, I'm going to start off pretty light because I don't need it to be dark. I just need it to be a little bit darker than what's behind it. Now obviously you're going to want to take a little more care and a little more time. This is just for demonstration purposes and trying to get this done quickly for you. Okay, so then I go to my next level and I just push a little bit harder and I get a nice darker middle ground shade and it's okay if it's not perfectly even because shadows and mountains are not perfectly even but also try to uh, shade it as best you can and, and do it with care and precision so that you you get something you feel good about 
even with this just being an exercise. Okay, so as you can see, I have four, <clears throat> four different shades or four different values. And now at this point, I'm going to get my 6B out, which is my softest graphite. And that's going to make a nice dark color for me. And if you were painting, you would do the same thing, except you would mix uh, black paint and white paint to produce some tints. But the effect of atmospheric perspective would be the same. Dark foreground, and then the values get lighter as you go into the background. And if you want to personalize this a little bit, you want to add an element, you know, if you want to draw Bigfoot walking through the mountains or something, uh, feel free. Just make sure that whichever plane of space you put him on, that you make him the same value as, as the field that you're on. And so for mine, I think I'll add something, maybe a deer, some type of character to add some interest. So yeah, I'm going to put right here, little bunny rabbit. And uh, that ought to do it. And so that's your basics of atmospheric perspective. And then you just do the same thing to this drawing and this one. And that's it. Thank you.